Hello. Today I'm going to read A Killer Ball at Honey Church Hall by Hannah Dennison, one of my good friends. Love this. Now, a little caveat. This is set in England, so I'm going to do it with a British accent, but I hope Hannah won't slay me, okay? Wish me luck. We'll have fun. You are absolutely not selling William Dobson, Rupert. The Dowager Countess, Lady Edith Honeychurch, was furious. Even Mr. Chips, her tan and white Jack Russell, seemed to bristle with indignation. Edith's son looked pained. Do we have to go through this again, Mother? For emphasis, Edith slapped her riding crop against the side of her leather boot. As long as I'm alive, this is still my house. Mother, Rupert hissed and gestured to where Mum and I were standing in the doorway, not in front of... The servants, Mum chimed in cheerfully. Don't mind us. We're always arguing, aren't we, Cat? I gave a polite smile, but Rupert looked even more uncomfortable. Why don't we come back later, I said, and grabbed Mum's arm, but she stood her ground and pulled her second-hand mink coat even closer. It really was freezing cold. Who is William Dobson? Mum asked. Is he for hire? Maybe he can help Cat hang her bathroom cabinet. I think Edith is referring to the 17th century artist, William Dobson, Mum. An artist who painted one of our ancestors who saved the hall from being razed to the ground in the English Civil War, Edith said angrily. And now Rupert wants to sell it and he's asked you, Catherine, to take it off for auction, so I hear. No, Rupert lied. I just wanted to show Catherine and Iris the damaged ceiling. Nonsense. You thought you could sneak them in through the Tudor courtyard without my knowing, but you seem to forget that Cropper never misses a trick. Cropper, of course, was the old butler. Although he rarely spoke, he seemed to have an uncanny gift of being everywhere at once. The truth was, I'd also thought it odd that Rupert had arranged to meet us at the end of the half-mile-long pergola walk on the far southwest corner of the hall, covered in an ancient wisteria with roots as big as my arm. I'd never noticed the old wooden gate that led to a narrow passageway. At the end, a pretty archway opened into a small cobbled courtyard. Mullioned casement windows took up three sides, and on the fourth were two doors. It was there that Edith had been waiting. Edith raised a quizzical eyebrow at me. Why are you holding those padded blankets, Catherine? And what is in that canvas bag? I'd brought the padded blankets to wrap up the painting, and my canvas bag was full of my tools. Mum and I both looked to Rupert for the answer. Did he ask you to value the Dobson, Catherine? Edith demanded. Of course he had. Rupert had phoned that morning to say that something catastrophic had happened in the Tudor wing and that they needed to sell a painting. I was only too happy to oblige. I was still trying to get my antiques business going. Despite having moved all my stock into the two gatehouses that flanked the main entrance, Cat's collectibles and valuation services were slow in getting off the ground. You're right, said Rupert defiantly. I did. Catherine told me that the last Dobson sold for around £350,000. Luxton's of Newton Abbott has a sale of all masters and British paintings coming up. I knew it, Edith exclaimed. Mother, Rupert ran his fingers through his thinning hair, clearly exasperated. We have to do something, and unless you can think of a way to raise thousands and thousands of pounds at the drop of hat, I'm all ears. But surely it can't be that bad, said Mum. The plasterwork ceiling is Elizabethan and very rare, Edith said. There is only one other like it in Devon at Holcombe Rogus. Presumably you're going to apply for a grant, I said to Rupert. The Historic Houses Association runs all kinds of maintenance and restoration programs. I have a contact there. Alfred is very good at decorating, Mum said suddenly. It was true. Mum's stepbrother had helped paint the carriage house. Uh, repairing a plasterwork ceiling needs specific materials. It can only be applied by skilled craftsmen, I said gently. Oh, that wouldn't faze my Alfred. He's got a real gift for making a copy look like the real thing. And of course, she was right. This so-called gift of Alfred's had sent him to prison more times than I could count. Edith smiled. Very kind of you to offer, Iris. But I'm sure that Alfred is far too busy overseeing the horses. 
Perhaps there is something else that might be worth selling, I said, anxious to change the subject. I'm not sure if you remember, your ladyship, said Mum. But if there's one person who knows what sells well, it's my Catherine. She was the TV host of Fix and Treasures. And I can assure you that there is nothing fake in this house, Edith said frostily. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with my British accent. If you'd like to know more about a killer ball at Honeychurch Hall or Hannah, check the links below, okay? You'll find out all sorts of good news. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.